Good morning, brothers. As I have your attention, the festivities are about to begin. My name is Chris Arnson. I am the host of the Iron Sharpens Iron radio program, and I'll be talking a little bit more about that in just a minute. But before I say too much, I want to bathe this entire event with prayer and to uh, start off with the initial prayer of the day. I would like uh, Pastor George Lawson of Baltimore Bible Church to come up and pray for all that will take place here uh, in this event. Amen. Thanks for coming, brother. Absolutely. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are uh, grateful uh, to be here. Uh, Father, thank you for each man uh, and the churches that they uh, represent. Uh, Father, I pray that you would uh, equip them, encourage them uh, during the, the time of fellowship and uh, through uh, what we'll hear from uh, James White. Uh, Father, we are grateful for uh, James White and for uh, his faithful uh, ministry. Uh, Father, we know that there are many rebellious men, empty talkers, deceivers, and uh, Father, uh, James White has uh, just been an example to so many of us uh, by uh, standing on uh, the truth of, of your word. We thank you for his boldness, uh, for his uh, tenacity, uh, for his uh, uh, just seeking clarity and uh, even uh, uh, standing uh, firm in uh, the face of uh, uh, so many attacks against him. Father, we pray that you would uphold him. And uh, Father, we thank you for the ways that he challenges us, Lord, to, to be more precise and uh, asking uh, those questions that we need to, to, to make sure that we're uh, holding to the line, Lord, that we're being faithful uh, to your word. Uh, so Father, I pray that you would bless him, bless his ministry, and uh, bless our time together. Uh, we thank you for, for all these men, Lord. I just pray that they would be encouraged and that they would go back uh, to their uh, churches, Lord, with uh, just a, a new zeal uh, to hold to your truth, Lord. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name we praise you and give you thanks. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Well, uh, if you're wondering why uh, you have been invited here, especially if you're a first-time attendee to the free Iron Trip and Zion Radio Pastors Luncheon, back in the 1990s, my precious late wife, Julie, uh, during a Christmas season, said, instead of us exchanging gifts, why don't we use that money to treat your pastor friends to a free lunch? And we can have uh, the, the publishers that you know donate books, possibly. You can invite a guest speaker uh, to give a, a challenging and encouraging message to the pastors. And, and my wife said that uh, I had more pastor friends than anybody she had ever met because I've been involved in Christian radio uh, for many years. And uh, she just thought that that would be a wonderful thing. And I took her up on her great idea and have been doing this luncheon every year since the 1990s. Uh, now it's twice a year. And uh, since my wife uh, went home to be with her Lord, God, Savior, King, and friend, Christ Jesus, uh, in 2010, I have been conducting these luncheons in loving memory of her and in tribute to her. So I am so thrilled that this event today is the largest turnout we have ever had since the 1990s of the Iron Trip and Zion Radio Pastors Luncheon. I thank all of you for being here. It touches my heart very deeply. A uh, few things, everybody at their table should have a flyer about my radio program, especially if you don't know about the program, you should become familiar with it. It's everyday live, of course now I'm running a rerun uh, while Dr. White's in town and doing that every day. But this is uh, got all the information you need to start listening to the program and also uh, to uh, hang these in your church, if you would, so your congregations find out about it. Also contact me if you have a good idea for a guest. It might even be you, that uh, you have a subject that you're aching to talk about. <clears throat> and we could discuss that and uh, see if we could get you on the air. So please take those back to your church with you. Uh, some of you may not know that this Saturday at 4 p.m., right in this building upstairs, where Dr. White uh, will be actually giving his presentation later uh, today, he'll be doing that upstairs. But this Saturday at 4 p.m., uh, we are having a debate, a free debate, 
Uh, unlike the luncheon where only men uh, were invited, this is open for everyone, men, women, and children. And the thesis is the Textus Receptus, as the Word of God, is equal to the New Testament autographs. And Dr. Peter Van Cleek is defending that thesis. And Dr. James R. White is opposing that thesis. Anybody who knows that he wrote the King James Only Controversy will immediately know that he is taking the opposing position on that. I hope that we fill all those seats upstairs. So please spread the word about this debate. If you need any more flyers for the debate, they're over by the coffee over there. So that I hope that you will attend that. Uh, also, for any of you willing to make the trip to Long Island, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Pete Hegseth of Fox News. He is one of the very few genuine Christians on staff at Fox News. He is going to be speaking at the Grace Christian Academy's fundraising gala. Grace Christian Academy is a classical Christian school that is affiliated with the church where I was a member before moving to Pennsylvania, Grace Reformed Baptist Church of Long Island in Merrick. And they are having a fundraising gala for Grace Christian Academy in Merrick, New York. Pete Hegseth is the speaker, and there are flyers at every table, at every seat at every table as well. Now I'm going to have my, my friend, Pastor Josh Miller of Grace Bible Fellowship Church in Harrisburg, uh, tell you about another event that he is hosting. I borrow your mic. Thank you, Chris, and a special thanks for this morning. This is just wonderful to be able to get together with like-minded brothers, uh, relax, fellowship, and enjoy a meal together. Uh, so thank you for keeping that tradition going. Uh, this is a joy this morning. Yes, so we have an event, our church, where I pastor. I'm pastor of preaching and teaching at Grace Bible Fellowship Church in Harrisburg, an event that would be open to any of you and any from your churches. It's uh, Reformation weekend, so October 29th and 30th. Uh, we have hosted this conference the last six years, uh, and this year's theme is the church, uh, the household of God. Uh, it does seem that each generation of the church is, faces a crisis regarding one of its core doctrines, and I believe a case can be made that uh, that core doctrine in this generation is an understanding of who the church is, why we exist, uh, and what makes the church precious in the sight of God. Uh, so this event is both a celebration of the household of God, who we are in Christ, uh, but also we'll have uh, some time of instruction. Uh, so that will be all day Saturday, October 29th. The theme goes into Sunday, October 30th. But obviously, you have your own churches that you are worshiping and fellowshipping with. Uh, the speakers for this year's conference will be Nate Pickowitz uh, and Dustin Bench. Uh, we'll be speaking on those themes. So this is a flyer. We'll find ways throughout the day to get one into your hand. But if you are interested, please seek me out. Uh, we'd love to give you more information. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Both of those men who are speaking, I've had them both on my program, Iron Sharpens Iron Radio. They are outstanding uh, brothers. Uh, I've known Nate Pickowitz for a much longer period of time, and he's, he's just, he blows my mind. He's a brilliant guy. He's also a historian. And, uh, can talk a lot about, if you ever wanted to invite him to your church, can talk a lot about how uh, the Northeast of the United States began as a bastion of biblical theology and how it had become so corrupted by leftism that is now almost nearly apostate with, with few exceptions. So I strongly recommend Nate Pickowitz. Well, we do, we're doing things differently this year. In regard to the book room, there are a lot of books out there. Uh, so many generous publishers, Christian publishers, who have been doing this since the 1990s, donating uh, books that I select from them uh, so that every pastor in the room can receive one. Uh, since this is the largest registration that we've ever had here, uh, probably because of Dr. James R. White being our keynote speaker, uh, we are going to request of you, if you're not a pastor, to wait until the pastors first move in and out of the book room to take what they want, and then the other books will be up for grabs for all the other men. 
uh, since this is a pastor's lunch, and even though many of you who are not in pastoral ministry are here, and I'm, I'm thrilled that you are, we just wanted to make sure that since this is specifically uh, primarily for pastors, that they get the first shot uh, at the books. And I, I want to highlight some of the things that uh, you'll be getting. But first of all, before I even talk about the books, my coffee! Hey. Mike Lindell found out about what we're doing, and he has donated uh, hundreds of bags of my coffee, and uh, different flavors, and there's also, you get, if you're grabbing the coffee, make sure if you take the whole bean that you have a coffee grinder. So, uh, this is from Honduras, and the last time I had a bunch of bags from anything from Honduras, they were duct taped to my chest at the airport, but I don't want to go. <laughs> Long time ago, must have been months ago, <laughs> a new sponsor of Iron Sharpens Iron Radio, the Baptist Expositor, uh, they have materials, free materials for you to uh, take with you, I hope many of you do. And I was thrilled to hear within the few, first few weeks of them advertising with us that, that uh, a church contacted them after hearing the ads. And there were, uh, I think the whole family at one of the churches got saved and were baptized. So I'm praising God for them. Uh, a new uh, contributor to the, the Free Pastors Luncheon are the publishers of the Legacy Standard Bible. And they have given us the uh, New Testament and Book of Psalms here. So I hope that you take advantage of that. Uh, Ligonier Ministries always uh, donates books for my luncheons uh, through their publishing wing, Reformation Trust. The Heart of the Reformation book, make sure you get a hold of that. And uh, the New American Standard Bible, the publishers, the Lockman Foundation, they have been publishing, uh, they have been sponsoring everything that I have been doing since the 1990s, even before I had my own radio program. They were the very first sponsors of the debates that I began in the mid-90s with Dr. James R. White of Alpha Omega Ministries. And uh, ever since I started my program, Iron Sharp is Iron, they were the first advertiser and they continue to support my show and events like this. And so make sure you grab an NASB. And I was wondering if my friend, uh, Pat, Pastor Rich Jensen, could come up just to say a few words about the NASB because his church uses this uh, version in their pews and they preach from it, or at least Pastor Rich does. And uh, he'll be coming up momentarily. And uh, this uh, has been a delight to uh, support them as they support me. Uh, fine folks at the Lockin Foundation, but Pastor Rich, tell our listeners a little bit about why you use the NASB. Looking for duct tape. <laughs> he said he's looking for duct tape. <laughs> okay, I was first introduced by the NASB as a young man. Uh, I had grown up in a Christian home, which was a King James only church, and would have told you I was saved, but God didn't save me until I was in my mid 20s after a period of rebellion. And I had a brother-in-law who was very faithful in the ministry. Uh, he was a Nuthetic counselor uh, and was dedicated to that. And when God saved me, he introduced me to the NASB. And as I would sit down and start reading through it, it made so much more sense to me. I could understand with a more modern English than I had ever understood before. And so I started using it myself in my own personal life. Uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't a pastor back then. Uh, my previous occupation, I was a homicide detective for, and did 20 years in the PD. Now I came into the ministry and <coughs> just kept using the NASB. One little quick story about it. Uh, whoops. Wow. Um, Dr. White was preaching at my church just a number of years ago now. And uh, we were sitting in my office before we were going out and we had our Bibles open. He said, would you look up this text for me? I don't remember the text. And I had worn the Bible out so much that all the pages were loose. So I said, well, here, you read it yourself. And I handed him a page. <laughs> and he just looked at me and says, you need a new Bible. And uh, 
So when he went back home, he sent me one, a brand new NASB. He didn't autograph it though, but <laughs> it would have been more, worth more money. <laughs> have him autograph one of those. <laughs> but, and we use it, use it all the time, and uh, I just, I, I really love the NASB. Thank you very much. And I obviously love them because they support everything I do financially. <laughs> but that's not the only reason I promote them. Uh, Dr. White is a professor at Grace Bible Theological Seminary in Conway, Arkansas. He's a professor of history and apologetics. And connected with that seminary is Free Grace Publishing, and they were kind enough to donate uh, copies for all of you, the 10 essential sermons of Charles Spurgeon. Yay. So I hope that you uh, take advantage of that. Crossway, another uh, publisher that biannually donates uh, copies of what I select from them. This is their brand new uh, title, Be Thou My Vision, a Liturgy for Daily Worship by Jonathan Gibson. And uh, I hope that some of uh, my non-liturgical pastors here are not going to be too terrified of that word, liturgy. Uh, I mean, everybody has a liturgy, it's just order of worship. So it doesn't mean you're going to have to do everything like this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it smells a little bit like incense, but don't let that work. <laughs> no, uh, I've heard wonderful things about this, and I uh, hope that you take advantage of this as well. Uh, another brand new book, uh, The Unwavering Pastor by the Good Book Company, Leading the Church with Grace in Divisive Times, or as some might say divisive, and that's Jonathan Dodson's book, forward by Dane Ortland. And uh, oh, th this is a, a new treasure. It's new only in that it was recently republished. But it is uh, the biography of John Gill. If you're not familiar with John Gill, he was a predecessor, predecessor of Charles Haddon Spurgeon and uh, a giant of the Christian faith, whether you are a Baptist or Presbyterian or Lutheran, you should really get a hold of this and familiarize yourself with John Gill. Not even all Reformed Baptists agree with everything Gill taught. Uh, he was a particular Baptist, as we who are Reformed Baptists used to be called. Uh, but it, it'd be foolish to ignore everything somebody had to say just because of some minor differences you might have with them. And this is just a tremendous uh, new uh, republishing of this biography by John Ripper. So I hope that you will make sure you get that. This is a fascinating book that's been translated into English for the very first time. The Magdeburg Confession. Uh, this uh, was used of God to stop the Roman Catholic Church from completely devouring Germany after the Protestant Reformation. And uh, I urge all of you to get a hold of this. This is, as I said, the first time that this has been available in English, and it is good to have in matters of all things regarding when the state oversteps their sphere of authority and whether Christians have the right to protest or not to be doormats <clears throat> for tyrannical governments that are seeking to destroy the church. So this is definitely something that you want to take home with you. We thank Matt Shuhella for donating these. Oh, here's another brand new book by our friends at Shepherd Press. Wayne Mack's book, A Practical Guide for Effective Biblical Counseling. And uh, Wayne Mack used to be affiliated with Grace Community Church in Sun Valley, California, where John MacArthur is pastor. Now he is ministering in South Africa. And Shepherd Press donated these to us. I strongly urge you to get a hold of this, especially if you're a pastor. It's obviously a no-brainer why that would be important for you. This is a book that I have every year in case some who have attended have, have not picked it up. We have new people visiting or attending the pastor's luncheon all the time. It's in spite of the cover, uh, looking possibly to some a bit amateurish and self-published, the content is phenomenal. Preaching with Biblical Passion, a scriptural and historical study by my dear friend Gabriel Grassi, who's a retired Reformed Baptist pastor, 
and it has been strongly uh, commended uh, by such glowing, prominent names in the church as Dr. Joel Beakey and even the aforementioned Wayne Mack. So please get a hold of this. I, I think it's a must read for every pastor, primarily on the area of homiletics. So please get a hold of that. With all that's been going on in the wake of the coronavirus uh, and the tyrannical steps that governments all over the world have taken to uh, in their efforts to silence the church during this. Caesar and the Church, a Biblical Study of Government and Church by Anthony Forsyth. Make sure you get a hold of that. Uh, <clears throat> many of you have been greatly benefited and blessed by Alexander Strauch. Uh, we, uh, a few years ago, gave away his book, Biblical Eldership. He's also got books on the diaconate and other things. This is a brand new book that he has written, Acts 20, Fierce wolves are coming, guard the flock, a study of Paul's final charge to the Ephesian elders. <clears throat> so strongly, obviously, uh, recommend that you get a hold of that. Uh, this, uh, this is a fairly new publisher. If you look at this book when you go in there, they, they publish, even aesthetically, some of the, the finest books the, the finest example of binding and, and so forth that you'll see anywhere, even amongst the, the most well-known and prominent publishers. Uh, Zurich Publishing, uh, they uh, were kind enough to donate for all the pastors here. A New Day of Small Beginnings by Pierre Corthiol, uh, who was a 20th century reformed <coughs> French theologian, virtually unknown by everybody, including theologically reformed Christians. And uh, I strongly advise you, regardless of your theological positions on issues of involving the Reformation, get a hold of this. Uh, you will be blessed. And uh, as I said, the finest in binding and everything, but the content is more important, and that is absolutely extraordinary. Here's an unusual book. This will be the last book I highlight. <clears throat> I've never seen a book on this subject, written by a doctor, an MD, J.Y. Jones, Worship Not the Creature, Animal Rights and the Bible. Uh, every hunter in here, and I'm assuming, I'm assuming since we're in Pennsylvania that there'll be a number of them, will benefit greatly from this especially. Uh, the original title was Let's Kill Bambi. Uh, <laughs> Subtitled without shedding a tear, <laughs> but I'm uh, planning on having Dr. Jones on the program. I've never addressed this issue, so I hope uh, that you pick this up. Nord Skog Publishing, uh, another publisher that's not well known to a lot of folks, but they they do the finest in uh, in binding and so forth. And the authors that they have are extraordinary as well. So I hope that you. Uh, get a hold of that. Now, some of you may be uh, having to defend yourself when you go home with all these books. Your wives are going to say, you bought all those books. I told you, you were crossed your budget on books, and you go out there, and you buy books, and you tell them, no, Chris Arnton gave them for free. And of course, they'll say, you're lying. <laughs> well, don't don't let, let the wives think I left them out because they have a, a wonderful gift as well. See these bags here? <laughs> uh, giant supermarkets donated these bags so that you can carry your books home. But they'll also come in handy when you have to yell out to your wife, we're out of Budweiser, honey. Uh, you can go to the supermarket and you can use this. So I don't Get concerned about your back, you know, this will be easier for you to carry. So this is a nice gift for the wife and uh, <laughs> little nice sayings, all you need is love, the little play on words there, like kneading dough. But for the Calvinists here, uh, we wanted to make you feel more comfortable too. So we also have a version of the bag that said, don't forget, God hated Esau. So <laughs> that will be uh, something that I'm sure you'll enjoy as well. Uh, we are going to uh, be served now, and uh, we will also give the announcement very soon when the pastors 
can go into the book room and have their first shot at the books. And then uh, we will go upstairs to the sanctuary at some point. Uh, it's hard to rigidly time these things, but uh, James White will be giving his special message for you uh, in the sanctuary upstairs. But uh, I'd like to have uh, someone pray for the meal. Uh, in fact, uh, will Angelo Valley uh, please uh, come up uh, to pray for our food? And uh, he is the pastor of Christ Reformed Church in the city of Pennsylvania. I forget. What is this? Alexandria. Alexandria, Pennsylvania. He's been a guest in my program a number of times. And if you could pray for the meal, brother. Sure. Gentlemen, as I imagine most of you are excited for a very long prayer, I'm going to disappoint you. Let's just take a moment to pray and thank the Lord for his faithfulness. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we can come together and be encouraged and to encourage one another. We're so grateful for the family of God that strangers who we've never met before we can just simply sit with and just marvel at your grace and faithfulness. And so, Father, we ask that even now that the hard work and effort that's been done behind the scenes would be blessed. We thank you for those who've served us and for this meal. We pray that it would strengthen us, especially for all that's ahead, and bless us in our time. Thank you, Father. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. This is a radio platform in which pastors, Christian scholars, and theologians address the burning issues facing the church and the world today. Proverbs chapter 27 verse 17 tells us iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. Matthew Henry said that in this passage, we are cautioned to take heed with whom we converse and directed to have in view in conversation to make one another wiser and better.